Hi, this is Long. Welcome to our video series on search patterns for the most common studies in radiology. Please note that this is an introduction to study interpretation. An enormous amount of detail is omitted for brevity. Continue dedicated reading, seeing as many cases as possible, and keep getting feedback from subspecialists during the course of your training. Okay, so today we're going to talk about a basic approach to the ultrasound of the liver, a Doppler evaluation of the liver for hepatic vascular abnormalities. So this sort of exam evaluates the hepatic arteries, hepatic veins, and the portal veins. Um, a lot of times, one of the indications you will uh, encounter is concern for portal vein thrombosis. Um, sometimes patients will have changes in their liver function tests or worsening ascites, some sort of change in their clinical status that will raise the question of underlying hepatic vascular abnormality, and this will be the sort of exam that will help detect or exclude that possibility. Um, in terms of a big picture organization of this, of the approach to this study, like any other sort of exam, we're going to take a look at the whole of the patient uh, context, understand the indication for the exam, their underlying issues, um, prior imaging that may have take, that seen the same area. Um, and especially any other prior Doppler evaluations of the liver. Um, that's going to help us compare between studies, you know, velocities and resistive indices, okay? We're going to go through, look at the whole study, and, you know, this can be done concurrently with the evaluation, is to get a sense of whether we're evaluating every, you know, seeing all the anatomy of interest. And that that includes, and we'll, you know, we're going to go through them kind of, um, and I like to kind of group them in terms of, uh, you know, in, into the portal system, the hepatic veins and IVC, the hepatic arteries, and then uh, like the, like the splenic vein and kind of the portal system that's like outside of the the region of the liver. Um, and you'll see also the aorta, and then any sort of incidentals that we may pick up. Uh, and then we'll touch very briefly. Um, uh, sometimes a similar sort of study is done in patients who have a TIPS, and we'll touch very briefly on a couple of those kind of essential points, though this particular video will not cover that in depth. We'll show you a uh, specific um, TIPS evaluation, but just as kind of a, um, a similar topic, we'll group that in uh, quickly. And, uh, and then kind of as we go through that whole kind of process, um, you know, that should kind of give you a basic understanding of how to approach this sort of exam. Okay, so this is what um, an ultrasound uh, liver Doppler uh, looks like. So we have first, to give you a broad overview, um, grayscale color and then spectral Doppler images at the main portal vein. Um, we got similar, uh, you know, color spectral evaluation of the right and left portal system, and then images go through and then move into like the IVC and hepatic system, the hepatic venous system. So we got the IVC, right hepatic vein, uh, mid -hepa uh, middle hepatic vein, uh, left hepatic vein. Okay. And then we kind of um, go out and we see the aorta, see the spectral Doppler evaluation there. And then we're going to take a look at the middle hepatic artery, the right hepatic artery, left hepatic artery. Um, and then on, on this particular evaluation, this particular study, the splenic uh, vein is omitted um, portal confluence. We don't have images of that, but if we had images, we'd look at that as well. And then we'll talk really briefly um, uh, about potential tips if that was that was included uh, also. So how do we actually go about uh, evaluating this sort of study um, and these the, these parts of the vasculature? So, um, you know, we took a look at what are all the relevant images and we noted, you know, what is there and what is missing or what cannot be imaged because of study limitations. And then I like to start with the portal system. Um, so here we have uh, the main portal vein um, and the sort of questions you want to ask yourself on the grayscale images are as best you can see them on the color Doppler is are the vessels normal in size? You know, is there any sort of internal echogenic material um, that would suggest uh, occlusive or non-occlusive thrombus? Are there collaterals, you know, um, and then when we see these kind of color Doppler images, you know, do, are the vessels grossly patent? Are we also seeing evidence of collaterals on these? You know, and then kind of you have to take a look at the you know the color legend here. But is the flow in the direct in the expected direction, which is hepatopetal for the portal system? Okay, um, we have here spectral Doppler images, and we want to see you know is the is is the velocity at least forty centimeters a second? Are we seeing expected? Um, respiratory variability or, you know, are, in some circumstances, if you see right heart dysfunction in the case of right heart failure or tricuspid regurgitation, you may see more pulsatile flow. So you, you want to keep an eye on that in terms of the waveform. Um, 
And then as we go through, we're going to do a similar evaluation in the other parts of the image uh, portal system. So we have more images of the um, you know portal vein here, and we have the right uh, portal vein. You can see that it's patent, it, that it flows in a hepatopedal direction. Um, we're going to look to see if, if there's waveform, appropriate velocity, and then throughout and then into the left. You know, it would be nice to have more um, in this particular circumstance. If there was high concern for a thrombus, to have more grayscale images, but um, you know, uh, you know, that's kind of another thing to keep in mind. So, if if if, if you do find echogenic material or you know absence of color flow, and in the portal system, you're concerned for thrombus, you want to make sure that we're optimizing the study so that we're not picking up artifact and thinking that's thrombus. So things like the, the scale and the PRF should be low. We want to make sure we optimize or have high gain. Um, you know, uh, if we're looking on, you know, a, a color box that it should be small um, and, and not picking up a whole bunch of artifact. Um, you want like a low wall filter. You know, the focal zone here should be appropriate to the depth of imaging. And then you want to correlate across the grayscale color. If you've got power Doppler, you want to throw that on if you're, you're questioning. If you've got microflow, that can be another technique that's useful. And then if you're really concerned about low, like really slow flow, that's simulating, you know, something like a thrombus. You can you can um, do like an augmentation, so the patient have the patient hold their breath and then release, uh, you know, or hold valsalva and release, and that will send blood through the liver, through the portal system, and then will help you kind of clear up any potential artifact um, and see if there really is, you know, patency through there. Okay, so that's that's the portal system. We've gone kind of gone through that for grayscale color and spectral Doppler. Um, you know, we go on and we're kind of at the IVC, the hepatic veins, and we're kind of asking similar questions. You know, first on grayscale, it, are the vessels patent? They look patent. Is there material in them? Are they normal in caliber? Is there internal, yeah, um, echogenic material? Are we seeing um, uh, collaterals either on grayscale or color? Um, you know, there's going to be rare variants in IVC anatomy, but, you know, the, the, you know uh, that can be something that we can sort out on prior imaging and then correlate with the current exam. On color Doppler, you want to see is there gross patency of the vessels? You know, are we seeing collaterals like uh, and then is the flow in the expected direction? And again, you know, making sure that we correlate with, um, you know, where, what, what color matches with the direction to or from to uh, towards or away from our uh, ultrasound probe. OK, I'm going to do the same. We're going to look at the uh, hepatic venous vasculature, um, uh, the right, we've got the middle. And then the left, and oh, and I should mention also that sometimes this exam is done concordant with a right upper quadrant, or you know, kind of like a, a you know um, other sort of study where you don't have more grayscale images, because that can be useful to correlate between the two of those. All right. Um, so here we're again looking, and we've kind of finished up with the hepatic uh, venous vasculature area, and then we're going to head into the aorta, and then some of the hepatic arterial system, and um, we're going to look on the you know. To the extent able, we're going to see that it's grossly painted, that we have in the aorta appropriate arterial uh, waveforms. Um, and uh, let's see, as we go through, and you see the hepatic, you know, now we're now in the uh, hepatic arteries. We're looking for um, gross patency. We're looking to see, you know, to the extent that we can on any grayscale images, if there's corkscrew appearance that you might see with portal, you know, portal hypertension. Um, there's you know abnormal changes in caliber of the hepatic arterial system, um, uh, and you know as we go through, um, have you know what is the velocity? What has it changed over time? As the have the resistic indices changed over time? These can be kind of important questions to see if there's hepatic arterial dysfunction. Or, uh, you know, um, uh, and uh, and t you know key you into any potential underlying vascular abnormality. Um, if we had images of the splenic vein and portal confluence, you would go through a similar process where you look for vessel patency, normal direction of flow, internal you know, thrombus or abnormal, you know, um, echogenicity. And then similarly, you know, similar to like the portal confluence, the splenic vein, SMV, those sorts of things that are outside the liver. But this this particular exam that we're looking at today um, in this video is much more focused just on the liver rather than outside. Um, if we do, you know, things to, to ask yourself if we were imaging more of the abdomen would be, you know, if are there collateral splenorenal shunts? Are we seeing, you know, if we are seeing those, is there a suspicion that make you think that the, there's cavernous transformation of the portal vein? Um, you know, you can see even on grayscale images just around the upper, right upper quadrant, just around the liver, um, 
you know, if there's ascites, if we have collections, you can see, um, sometimes you can see pleural fusions, you know, just uh, incidentally adjacent to the, the liver across, you know, the, the diaphragm, uh, these sorts of things. Um, we'll see incidentally in the anatomy that's imaged, if there's ductal dill, if there's per liver parenchymal lesions, these sorts of things, especially in correlation with a right upper quadrant ultrasound would be the sorts of questions you want to ask yourself as you're going through this exam. Um, and, you know, uh, this, this particular video does not focus on tips evaluation. However, a similar series of questions and themes runs through that sort of evaluation. And just so very briefly, if you were to have to take a look at, um, you know, uh, a tips as well, your, your, the evaluation is similar as to when you're looking at the portal system, you're looking for internal echogenic material, you're looking for patency. Um, you're looking on color Doppler if you know you see you know, if there's aliasing, change in X flow, all flow when you have a tip should be th towards the tips um, from the portal system. On spectral Doppler, when you're looking at a tips, you want to check you know f two to three centimeters before the tips at the portal vein, and you're looking for like more than 30 centimeters a second. You know at the portal end, mid portion, at the IVC end, you want to check velocities there, and which should be between like 90 and 190, and 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 then you're looking for significant change. You know in um, you know, compared to prior between contiguous segments. These are kind of the things to keep in mind. Just, again, big picture, major things to think about, should that be this case. Um, and, and it can be often wrapped into this sort of um, uh, arterial and venous of, uh, and the portal system uh, evaluation, okay? Um, and so once you have a sense as to, you know, uh, the big picture of what is going on in terms of uh, the vas vasculature, the uh, peak systolic velocities, the uh, resistive indices, it's important to take a step back and then put that back into the clinical scenario that is being queried um, and make sure that any sort of other incidentals or potentially explanatory findings you're also putting into that context of the patient. Okay, and so just to recap, uh, this you know can be frequently felt to be a complex exam. Um, you know the overall organization is basically to understand what's going on with the patient, the suspicion for any particular abnormality, look and see that we're imaging everything we need to image to answer the question, and then as we go through looking at the portal system, the hepatic veins and IVC, the hepatic arteries and any sort of like, um, you know, uh, the aorta, uh, uh, splenic vein, SMV, anything else that we, we need to image outside of the liver, any incidentals that help us sort out um, what's going on, and then putting all of that together um, into the context of the patient and any sort of prior measurements across, um, especially prior liver Doppler uh, imaging for velocities and RIs, that will help us really understand and sort out if there really is a true abnormality. And it's important also to mention that if we do find a, throm a potential thrombus that we're optimizing the sonographic you know, parameters to make sure that we're not, um, you know, overcalling what would be an artifact um, as, uh, you know, a thrombus instead.